Andrea starts off this hour in Alaska. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hi, Mr. Ramsey. I'm well. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so it's, it's sort of a long story, but um, when I was 19, my father convinced me that the only way to keep our farm afloat was to take out a $36,000 agricultural loan in my name. And it has been three years, and he has not made any payments, and I'm sort of at a loss for what to do now. Hmm. And so the loan that was taken out in your name, is it a lien on the farm? Um, we put up collateral in the form of livestock that we were going to purchase with the money, and I think a bit of equipment that we already owned. Okay. And what has happened to the livestock and the equipment? What was that? What has happened to the livestock and the equipment? Has the bank picked it up since you haven't paid a payment in three years? No, um, they haven't. They haven't taken any action against us. Um, I was. It was suggested that I take or let the go the loan go into deferment, so they can take the bits of collateral back. But that would break up whatever semblance of a family relationship we have left. Okay. And um, right. I'm sorry. You're, you're so that. you're you're 22 years old. Yes, sir. Okay. And your dad asked you when you were 18 to take out a loan, and he's not paid a single payment on it in three years. Yes. Um, they've taken my tax returns the last two years, but that hasn't put much of a dent in anything. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I'm a receptionist. Okay. Do you live with them still? I do, and um, I go to school full-time. Mm, okay. And do you pay your own bills? I do, and I pay um, a portion of rent i guess it would be oh on the farm okay why have or they not why have they not there. paid the payments that they agreed to pay um it's hard to say um i've tried confronting him about it and it doesn't end well usually i'm going you know, to fight and then it, things don't get solved uh, i'm so sorry what a horrible position for a 22 year old young lady to be put in by her um i hesitate to use the word father um, what a creep. Um, so, uh, are you involved in your church and your community? I'm not. Okay, all right. I think you need to seek some counsel from a family counselor and uh, maybe a pastor and get some people mm -hmm. in, your, in your corner because, um, truthfully, what's happening to you is called financial abuse. Uh, your parents are abusing you. And they're using their position and their emotional stronghold over a young woman uh, to take advantage of you and really setting you up for a problem that may take you a decade to recover from financially. And so um, he here's what's going to happen. This is not going to end well, no matter what you do. You need to come to that conclusion. Okay? Okay. Your dad is, is not a good guy. He has not done a good thing. This is horrible, and it's not going to end well. You cannot make your father be okay. Can you hear that loud and clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry you're facing this. But you do not have the power to make your dad be okay. He was not okay a long time before this conversation came up. And so what you've got to do is just admit he's, he's a mess. He's a hot mess. And he's probably not going to be happy with anything that you do because eventually they're going to foreclose on and sue you. A 22-year-old receptionist who's in school. They're going to sue you. They're already taking your tax return. And eventually they're going to sue you. Okay? And they're going to take the collateral. Because for some reason, Bozo thinks he doesn't have to pay payments. I don't know why Bozo <laughs> thinks this, but he's crazier than a bean, apparently. But I don't know who takes advantage of their 22-year-old kid anyway. So I, I can't grasp where this guy's coming from. So he's going to be upset. He's going to be mad. And it's his fault. Can you hear that? Yes, sir. So you're going to have to just decide when that's going to be. And you probably need some good, strong, mentally healthy people in your corner walking with you to guide you and gently and kindly stand up for yourself because you never have. You've been abused. 
You've been. Do you realize you've been emotionally taken advantage of? Um, not until you pointed it out. Okay. Do you think that's the truth? Yes, sir. Yeah. Does it feel that way to you? It does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got crapped on, didn't you? I mean, really. By your own dad. I mean, he has not, <laughs> he's left his own kid vulnerable. And, and so what if he were if he were to grow suddenly manhood, or grow suddenly a backbone, he'd start selling everything in sight in order to keep his own child from being harmed. But this guy ain't gonna do that, is he? Probably not. No, not probably. He's not. He's not. We know that by the fact that you're in this situation to start with. And so you're going to have to start taking some steps to protect Andrea, who is an abuse victim. And you're going to have to decide what those steps are going to be. And none of those steps are going to make him happy. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Hang on the line. I'm going to have Kelly send you a book that I want you to get a highlighter out and post-it notes. And I want you to memorize the whole freaking book, but certainly entire paragraphs. It's called Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud. Um, because you have had someone walk over into your yard. No, no. They drove a bulldozer over into your yard and did donuts, okay? They stepped all up into your stuff here, and, and it was your own dad, which just makes this heartbreaking but also very, very difficult emotionally to process for anyone, but certainly for a 22-year-old living at home on the farm. I'm sorry, kiddo. Hold on. Kelly will pick up. There's no magic answer to this except him sell everything and pay the bill, and he's not going to do that. Kelly's going to pick up. We're going to send you a copy of that book. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Um, let me go ahead and help you because we have just finished some uh, identity theft research. And um, would you believe that 14% of identity theft is by someone you know? And a disturbing amount is by parents who take out loans in their children's Social Security numbers. Or maybe borrow money on the farm and talk the 18-year-old into it. That's not identity theft, but it's so close that it really could be put categorized in the same bucket of slime. Scum. That's what's in those buckets. You parents who take advantage of your own kids, slime. Scum. 